to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. You know, I always tell you that as we run our businesses, grow, manage them, all the things, we are consistently faced with choices to invest our time or money. Typically, the earlier we are in our business journey, we'll invest time. And later, as we grow, we are more likely to invest money. And the thing is, this is almost always just simply a result of the resources available to us. But When you can invest money in the beginning, particularly strategically, it almost always pays you back big dividends because you are shortening the journey to success and profitability. You are learning from others and you are getting services that will elevate your business sooner rather than later. The thing is, knowing all of this is one thing and doing it is often still hard. Today, you will hear from someone who has invested a lot of money in her business. She wanted to get to the head of the line and get going from the get-go on that path to success. I'm joined today by Jamie Gasparovic, founder and principal designer of Studio Gaspo, a boutique, full-service interior design firm. Jamie has spent thousands in investments in developing her business and herself as a business person. Six figures in the last year, to be specific. Before you drop your jaw, you will learn that Jamie is very intentional in her investments and they all have been a great value to her business in one way or another. Many of Jamie's investments have come from listening to this podcast, including Sandra Funk's the Interior Design Standard, Luann University's Design for Construction 101 with Jenny Slingerland, and she's worked with Rachel Bozak Johansson and others. So maybe you don't need convincing to invest in yourself in your business, but maybe you need some guidance on what to invest in. All of this is discussed today with Jamie. We'll also talk about the added benefit of how investing in yourself can combat imposter syndrome. Before we talk about these investments, I want to tell you about the WCAA Jill Robeson Memorial Scholarship 2024. This is for all of you, whether you're an interior designer, a workroom, a window treatment retailer, or a window treatment installer. These awards are to honor the memory of Jill Robeson and to promote education in the window covering industry for those already in the industry as well as those new to window coverings. This year, there are four scholarships being awarded, one one in each category of workroom, interior designer, installer, and window treatment retailer. These scholarships can be used for education in the calendar year of 2024 or 2025. You can use them for a conference, a class, business coaching, and more. The deadline to apply is June 1st. Head over to wcaa.org forward slash scholarships to learn more and fill out an application. Keep in mind that if you win one of these, you can use it for anything related to building your business. Power Talk Friday events, exciting windows conferences, working with a business coach, anything. So don't hesitate to put your name in the hat for this. Okay, let's talk to Jamie and see what she has done to intentionally invest and develop herself and her business. Hey, Jamie, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Hi, Luann. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I promised myself I wasn't going to do this, but it is the first thing I'm going to (laughs) do. We're going to shout out. What? (laughs) (laughs) I told her I don't want her head to get too big. She gets so many shout outs on here. (laughs) Well, you know what? You You know, Meredith Huck is who we're talking about. She has really created such a network of 
colleagues in this business. And, you know, I keep learning about each of you. And whenever somebody fills out on the form, how did you hear about the podcast? Like Meredith Huck, Meredith Huck, right? <laughs> and what's so funny is, in Instagram, maybe about two weeks ago or so, she actually wrote, you know, Luann, I tell everyone and everyone about you and your daughter, Christy. Yep, <laughs> she does. <laughs> so, hello to Meredith from me and Jamie. Hi, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this is your show, though, and we're going to talk about you, yes. Jamie. And you made a statement on your intake form that one of the best ways to combat imposter syndrome is mm -hmm. to thoughtfully invest in yourself as a business owner and also in your business and your business development. And so right. I love this. You have me at hello with this line, but talk to a little bit about it from your perspective. What did you mean when you put that on the form there? Yeah. So I feel like there's no one in this business or in the world that does not deal with some level of imposter syndrome. Like it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business. Um, I had an Instagram message back and forth with someone who is very well known and very big in this business. And um, she was having, she was posting a story about having imposter syndrome. And I was like, oh, so the great XYZ even has it. She's like, yeah, you know, so it's literally everyone. Um, so I feel like one of the ways to help combat that is by investing in your business. Um, I've done a lot of investing in my business and I just feel like it raises your confidence when you learn more, you know what you're doing, you feel like you know what you're talking about um, and confidence is just the key. So I feel like that you know comes from investing, investing in yourself, bettering yourself, bettering your business is gonna make you more confident. Well, and I love the concept because, I mean, I even talked about it in my first book seven years ago, um, about being the expert, like being the expert in the room. And yeah. so that goes both ways when we're working on our business and we're working in our business. So when we work, you know, in our business, you're the expert in the room when you go to High Point or you go to Las Vegas Market or you go to an exciting Windows conference or Luann, Univers uh, Luann Live conference, and you're getting more information on how to do the business, the design part of what you're doing, right? Like right. you're learning from your colleagues, you're, you're seeing the furniture, you're seeing what's available. The other side of it is being the expert in your, your business, getting the training on the process and the system. And the thing about it is, is I, I like that you make the connection to the imposter syndrome with it, because I've often talked about it just from, to me, it's logical. The more you right. know and the more you understand, the confidence comes along, right? Like, how could it not? Like, now I know how to do my bookkeeping. I don't do it, but I know how. So now I feel better about myself. Or now I know what brands align with my aesthetic because I've been to market multiple times and I've taken the right. time to curate that, right? But that that connecting it to imposter syndrome, Jamie, talk more about that. Um, so I just feel like it's hard to feel like an imposter if you feel like you really know your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think imposter syndrome comes from being unsure, which there's so much to know in this business. And, you know, a lot of people are self-taught, didn't go to school, you know, kind of, I don't want to say fell into it. You always say like no one falls into this, but um, maybe don't have like the educational background or whatever. So there's just a lot to learn um, and a lot that people don't know. And so then it makes you feel unsure if you're trying to sell a sofa to a client and you've never sat on it and you're not really familiar with the lines yet because you haven't been to market or what have you, it's it's hard to feel confident in that sale. And then you get that imposter syndrome feeling like, what am I doing here? I don't know anything. I don't, how, you know, how can I sell this sofa to someone? Why should they trust me? And you kind of start spiraling. Um, but I feel like if you have that knowledge, if you've made that investment, if you've gone to high point, you've sat on the sofa, you can speak to its quality how it feels when you sit on it, you know, you know, the line, all of that stuff um, just makes you feel, again, more confident. I know what I'm doing. I'm not like faking this. I've been there. I've done that. You know, what I love is that you said in there was the spiral, because I think that was the little key that I was looking for. And you said it because I do understand if we don't understand how to do something, it creates an uncertainty. And right. so then my brain is like, so then go crack that uncertainty, go learn your books or go learn about furniture or go learn about window treatments or whatever it is. But 
that's the key of the imposter syndrome there because it's that feeling of, well, I don't know how to do this. Well, I probably don't know how to do that. And then that means that that's probably not, I'm not probably not doing that right either. And right. now the whole thing is a mess, right? And how, and how am I even in business? And yeah, right. no like, one's going to What am I me. doing yeah. here, right? Yeah. And the thing yep. is, that is all noise in our head because we might have that one slice where we really don't know something, but it doesn't mean that all the other spiral is, is deserved or warranted. But right. that is what happens to us as humans, though, is your point, right? Right. 100%. And I think um, a lot of people think, oh, someone else knows everything. Again, like this super big designer I'm talking to, like, you think she's got it all figured out. Like, she doesn't either. No one does. But mm -hmm. I think it's just like having the confidence to do the thing too. Like, there's some meme out there about, you know, someone way stupider than you is doing the thing you want to do. And it's like, it's so true. And they're doing yeah. it just because they freaking did it. Like, right, right. And you're sitting here swirling about like, I don't know enough. And it's like, you just have to go do it, learn, educate yourself, invest along the way. But it's really like so much about the confidence, I think. I love it. I love it. And the thing is, what you've done is you've taken an approach where understanding certain amount of that imposter syndrome and that not knowing what we're doing is bound to creep up along the way all along the way. And what you've decided to do is let me strategically make consistent, conscious investments in your own education and personal development so that you're mitigating it in real time. That's what I'm seeing and hearing out of the form that you sent to me. Is that kind of what you're doing, Jamie? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And it's like, okay, what's the next weak spot or whatever where I'm feeling uncertain or, you know, I don't feel super confident standing in my space, uh, you know, as Sandra says, like, mm -hmm. okay, let me go delve into that and kind of become an expert there. And then I can feel really good about the information I'm putting out, you know, to my clients or whatever about that piece of the business. Yeah. So to that end, you, a large part of your business over the last six years has been designed for construction projects, but yes. off air, you explained to me how you invested in taking design for construction 101 at Lou university with Jenny and yes. tell me what, tell us what, tell, share with us what you said to me off air about your decision to do it and the aftermath of doing it. Yeah. So um, when I did Jenny's class, I had been doing new builds, working with construction projects for a few years. Um, so I was no stranger to that. I wasn't coming into it like, what's an elevation? What's a spec book? Like, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I just kind of wanted to gut check myself. Like, I know Jenny is the best. I know that she knows what she's doing. She has an amazing business. She works with tons of builders out in Arizona. So um, to me, I'm like, this is worth the money just to like peek behind the curtain at what Jenny is doing and kind of check what I'm doing against what she's doing and <laughs> see like, am I on the right track here? Um, is there anything that I'm missing? Are there any gaps that, you know, she can fill in for me? Um, so it was more of that. And I thought it was so worth it. And again, I did feel like, okay, I'm on the right track. Like I'm doing the elevations. I've got my spec book. Um, all of that stuff, but even just like her uh, template that she had for it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take that and use it now. Um, so, you know, I was saying to you off air, like if I can just get one little nugget from something that I'm investing in, that has the potential to make a huge difference in my business. Um, and that can mean, you know, six figures in the design business. So I feel like, you know, it's really worth it if you can take one thing away. Well, and that's the truth, right? We, we discussed that as well. It's the course is $1,900. But you close one project, I, you close one $10,000 renovation of a family room, let alone one design build for yeah. multiple six figures. Like, what? Are we, why are we still talking about what this course costs is basically right. my Such question. Such a drop in the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. And then it's going to, like you're saying, you have that knowledge forever. So it's not just that one, that first project you get from it. It's forever, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I love your philosophy on I don't have to not know anything in order to learn something. It's funny because mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I invested five figures in a speaker training program. And, you know, the Vincennes looked at me. He's like, what are you doing? 
And <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> right. He's like, I've watched you 20 times. You've done it 500 more times when I haven't been there to watch you. He goes, and I don't remember anybody ever going, get the cane. Who wants this lady on stage? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but my thing is, is what did I know? And I had the right. exact same, exact same thought process as you, Jamie. And it was funny because just like you, like if you had had a pre-conversation with myself or Jenny, your conversation would have been probably very similar to my conversation with the person who owns this speaking training. The person, by the time we were done talking about 25 minutes said, I'm going to tell you what, we aim to str- we strive to teach five core things in the year long of this program. You probably have three of them down. If you if you find it worth it to come and learn these other two for our price tag, then we are welcome yeah. you in because you have to apply to be in. And she said, but if you're going to look at me and say, I knew three out of five things, it's not for you. And I was like, no, right. no, no, no. I want to know those two other things. I want to know what right, they are. Right. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Right. And that's how I feel like I want to close the gap. I don't, yeah. it doesn't have to be, you know, the Grand Canyon. Like I want to close any gap. I want right. to be the best, get incrementally better at everything that I'm doing. So Well, and the thing is, what I know is true of yourself and other designers and of me, I knew and you know, you would have eventually closed that gap. But would it have been three more years of doing design builds? Would you have like if there were three big takeaways that you got from the class with Jenny, you're a smart person. You're intentional. But my thing is, well, could I just have it now? Like, why do I have to wait (laughs) and figure out the answers for everything? If there's certain things every day that we're all going to figure out for ourselves and we're going to learn by, by doing, but there's lots of information and knowledge out there that we can just pay the fee and get the info, you know? Yep. Yeah, agreed. So. And that's my philosophy too. I'm like, yeah, if I can pay $1,800 to have access to Jenny and, you know, see yeah. what she's doing and make sure I'm on the right track, get a template, like totally worth it to me. A hundred percent. my business. So I'm curious because you also invested in Sandra Funk's, the interior design standard. Yes, and I so I'm curious because that is a basically a design franchise in a box model. It's like a click and a, your Asana is built and all the things. Yep. And what I have found, which I think is positive, and I'm curious with, with designers like yourself that have taken time to work on their business, often it's a similar type of thing. It's like, here's everything, but I'm going to pull these eight, five, whatever, let's call it 25% out of this and just up level what I was already doing. Whereas if you are completely new or have never established a system, you can just adopt the standard. What, well, how did it work for you, Jamie? Kind of the first thing that you were saying. And I actually yeah. had someone ask me about this in a Facebook group about the standard. Like, okay, if you already had systems and you, you know, you're not like brand new, do you feel like it was still worth it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, again, like Sandra in that program gives you so much. And what I love, like I've said this a million times, but I feel like other programs say like, oh yeah, we're giving you everything. But then it's like, oh, they'll show you a screenshot of their presentation or they're not really giving you, you still kind of have to go out and recreate things. Um, but with Sandra, it's like, nope, here's the contract. Like literally <laughs> here's the Asana, like literally, you know, she's actually giving you everything. Um, so I loved that. And it was just like, yeah, is there anything that I can, you know, up level from what, what I have to what she's given me? Like I had a contract, but I started using her contract cause it was way better. Mm. You know, um, now I'm actually in the process of invest. I'm, um, working with Wendy Estella, who I know, oh, you know, love it. Yes. um, to just kind of like tweak it even more to make it more personal to me. And, but she said, oh my God, Jamie, of all my clients that I've had, and you know, she works with designers specifically. Sure. Um, this is the best contract. Like you have everything in here. Let, you know, we just kind of like rearranged it to suit me a little bit better. But so I thought that was a huge credit. You know, it's not just like a boilerplate contract. Oh, Sandra doesn't um, phone anything in. There's yeah, no way. Yeah. She didn't just Google interior design contract and put it as part of the standard. She worked yeah you know, very closely yeah, with her own thorough. lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I yeah, love though I that you take it because... to your own lawyer though, too. I see I that to me, that's like, that. it's just like we say all the time. I don't expect you to do your bookkeeping, but I expect and hope that you know what your bookkeeper is doing. And to me, right. that's that same thing with your contract. It's like, 
take it to your own lawyer and maybe, you know, stamp of approval or to your point, you're tweaking it a little. And you do have to think about the states that you're in, the countries that you're in, you know, of making sure you're compliant for your state or country, right? Right. And even just the way that my business works, like I would say I have, sometimes I do just a build with no furnishing. Mm. So the contract isn't really set up for that. So I kind of parsed out like, okay, let's just have the parts that are, if this is a build only job, I want a contract specific to that. I don't want to talk about purchasing furniture or like the warehouse or whatever, because it's not relevant. So just stuff like that, where again, it's like she gave me this great starting point. Um, and it was way better than what I had. So I up leveled to that. Now I'm up leveling again, you know, now that I have, I'm investing with Wendy to just make it even more personal. I love it. I love it. So those are like tangible takeaways, right? Like tangible takeaways for taking Jenny's class. You're really a understanding that you had a pretty good system there for doing a design build on your own. Yeah getting some templates and, you know, doing some things and some clarity there. And then of course, with the standard understanding that there's 80% of it that maybe is or isn't appropriate to, because you are, you know, you know, have your SOPs and stuff, but just up leveling. How about just being in the room? Like I feel like, and I often say that the, the power, the advantage, the impact from doing a Power Talk Friday event, coming, you came to Luann Live this year, last year yep. in 2023, of being part of the design standard or being in that that virtual classroom with Jenny. I'll, to me, there's so much more that also is like not quantified as a dollar amount, but it's the connection with the people you make and oh, maybe yeah. the aha of somebody saying something or sharing something that you're like, whoa. Hadn't thought about it that way. Talk about that a little bit, Jamie. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the other things that I invested in where I met Meredith is Design Camp. Oh, Um, right, right. it's, It's amazing. Like, I don't have enough good things to say about it. But again, I'm like, I'm someone who invests in myself. I'm like a crazy learner, researcher, whatever. So a lot of the information that they were presenting at Design Camp was not like, I've never heard this before. You know, like I yes I had heard I'd heard it on a podcast I'd heard it here like it wasn't some revelation a lot of it but number one just hearing it from someone else I feel like you can always like someone says something in a slightly different way and you're like oh that really hits for me like I've heard that concept but like just the way that they presented it makes so much sense um, and makes it more applicable to me and my business Um, and then I say like design camp my biggest takeaway from that was the people like I have, I made so many great design friends that I talk to on a daily and weekly basis from there. And that is like invaluable. Right. So, you know, it's like, I have that community. I have people that I can text and be like, this is happening. What do I do? What's going on? You know? And um, yeah, I feel like that is a, a massive, massive value and you can't really quantify it, but you know, it's huge. It's like the education that doesn't leave with the event. That's the right. thing, right? I have had... So many designers and window treatment professionals meet multiple colleagues or that one colleague that is remain their steadfast person that they call for all the things, all the good things, all the crazy things, all the sad things, you know, relating to the business and always doing the barometer check of this feels really crazy right now. What just happened? Am I am I nuts or is this a bad thing? Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And I feel like I have that, like, where we're giving each other gut checks and, you know, taking accountability and being like, okay, this is what happened. Like you said, like, wind it back yourself. What's going on here? Like, can you look over my process? Is there something that I'm having a blind spot to that? Why this is going off the rails here? And I find that, like, listen, you guys hear me talk about the Facebook groups often enough, right? I know that there's tremendous value for the big groups out there that my friends run, that Claire and uh, Veronica and, you know, Cheryl run, and there's others. I'm, you know, I'm just missing the names right now, but these are valuable. I know a lot of learning goes on in them, but a lot of times I see context missing. And so what'll happen, the difference to me, what you just described If I'm in a Facebook group and something just went sideways on a project and I put the thing in the thing, the the text in the group, 
it's di- like you just said, like they don't know the Mer- background. Right. Meredith is going to ask you, wait, what did you say before yeah. that? What did you do? Did you yep. forget a step? Like we've got to get the context first, because without the context, the solutions sometimes are just so drastic and right. so off the like, wall. Cut them off. Yeah. Fire right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, like, red flag. yeah. Hold on. It was actually your fault. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I feel. It's like, and the, my design friends that I've made, it's like, they know my, we're literally talking daily, weekly. So it's like, they know every aspect of my business. They know how I run my business. They know what I'm charging. They know this new document that I'm trying, like, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. So they know the back, I don't have to catch them up. They yes. know, and then I'm yeah. telling them the situation and they know what's going on in my business to yeah. like help, you know, give a perspective. Right. And it's, it's what it is, is it's not a knock on the Facebook group because they, they provide a good service. It's a knock on any individual who comes in with a point blank. This is what my consumer did wrong without the context of how we got to that. That's, right. that's what I don't like. I think it's the, it's not the, the group owner's fault. It's right. the individual business person showing up and really basically saying, just, you know, soothe my wounds for me because poor me, like I don't right. have, I have no patience for it. I have no patience right. for them. So, so yeah. So, but I love that because, you know, look how many of us are in business by ourselves. Listen, I, I rent a live office, like storefront from my other company, just so that I'm with humans. Like nobody's well, in my exact, alone. <laughs> right. Like nobody's yeah. in my exact space with me. Diana's here a couple of days a week, but like the refrigerator's at window works and like the whole team is at window works. So I go back and forth. I go over to Gary's office. I'm like, Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Like if I were, when I had this podcast, the first four years I ran it, part-time while I did window works. It was my side hustle. So to leave and go home to the third floor was what I needed because I had two days a week to do it and there could be no distractions. I didn't take this off of the window works books. It wasn't off two weeks, two weeks. I was home two, I was home 10 business days by myself that I called my husband. I'm like, did we rent that other like storefront on? Cause we have a little strip center, little tiny strip. Coming back. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, the lady's supposed to come Monday with her check. And I, I'm, I'm, he goes, she was supposed to have come on Monday with her check and it was Wednesday. And I'm like, so I'm going to scoop it from her. And he's like, what? I'm like, it's Wednesday. She, did she call you and say, he goes, no. I'm like, so we have no idea, right? Yeah. That's it. And I'm like, I'm coming in. I'm bringing my checkbook because it can be so isolating yeah. to work alone. Like I have 13 people in my company, but every one of them is virtual. It's yeah. like, and so for you guys, it's the same. And it's, but of course your industry has an event every calendar day of the year where you can take advantage of meeting each other. And, but you have to have this frame of mind, Jamie, that you have is I am going to get out of my box. I am going to invest in a class, a, co- a conference, a course, and I'm going to not only that, get the knowledge, but I'm going to meet my peers because that's like 50% of the battle is having true, meaningful relationships with people who can help you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that was a lot of my desire to go to Luann live. I was like, I just want to be in the room. I want to like, (laughs) you know, see other designers. Like I just get so energized by that. Yeah. Even though I'm an introvert, I'm like, I could talk design with people all day. You know, like you meet someone and you're like, we could talk for hours. Like we just have so much to talk about. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. So one huge takeaway was the relationships that you made. So I love that. How about a, was there a specific, you know, process or thing that you were doing that you were like, whoa, what an easier way or what a better way or something like that, that came from any one of the things that you've invested in in your business? Well, it's not a process, but I feel like pricing is huge for me. Um, And where my pricing started to where it is now is like night and day from, again, getting around other people. Like I have no idea starting my business. You know, I came out of design school. They obviously teach you nothing about you know, <laughs> business in design school. Um, but I'm like, I don't know what I should be charging. Like, uh, you know, I heard this number, so I'll go with that. Whatever. That seems pretty good. Um, and then just hearing, you know, getting around other designers, hearing from an outside perspective, like, excuse me, you're charging what? Like, that is criminal. <laughs> They're robbing. That is 
Jamie, no, quadruple that immediately. Like, are you freaking kidding me? So I feel like that was my biggest, like one of the first things that I invested in was not interior design specific. It was like a, a container for service-based businesses. And um, I feel like that was one of the things, you know, I was telling you, like, I don't regret investing in anything because I have good takeaways from all of it. But that's something where I'm like, ah, maybe that wasn't the best um, choice for me. But I'm like, looking back, okay, that's the first thing that got my wheels turning on increasing my prices drastically. So it's like, if that, if that's, you know, quote, unquote, all I got out of that, like, that's, that's huge. It. That's so right. maybe I, you know, it wasn't the perfect fit. But I'm like, just to get that mindset rolling of like, wow, you are criminally undercharging, stop that, like, that did that for me, you know, and then just all these things kind of build on that and hearing from other people. And, you know, like, again, you're in an echo chamber and the clients are in a great like resource for feedback <laughs> for pricing, you know, that, like they think it's too expensive if you're a dollar. So, um, you know, just hearing from other designers and like what they're charging and what, you know, what's possible was like extremely helpful. What I think is interesting, and I love that you still think it was a positive experience because that one that you were talking about was the one investment that you made that wasn't design related specific. It wasn't industry specific coaching right. or training or a course, but how powerful that non-designers thought you were criminally charging too right. much, too less. Right. Right. Like, that was the other think thing. It's about like they're that. not in the industry. Yeah. That's right. If, you know, 10 designers said, oh, Jamie, you're not charging enough and you're brand new in your career, you still might not listen. But 10 non-designers are telling you that. 10 potential right. garden variety consumers are saying. So I, I think, and that, to your point, was a great catalyst for your brain to be open as you then come into the design industry for more education and knowledge. And you're like, oh, right, this this isn't the way to do right. it. Right, right. I yeah, love that absolutely. because I think what happens, I mean, you come out of, whether you come out of design school or you just decide to be a designer because based on other education or other experiences that you have, we know that many, many, many designers have not been to design school, of right. course, and are, are successful regardless, right? But However you first start, I can see like thinking to yourself that 65 or 75 an hour is probably a great because maybe you came from an admin position where you were making 25. So right, right. 75 feels like a million dollars. But when you're running a business and you're not a W-2 employee of a company, that 75 represents everything. It's the right. gas in the car to get to the job. It's the website, the website you know, yeah, hosting. Yeah. And you know what I mean? It's not your 75 an hour. And I think that's a big thing that a new business owner has to wrap their brain around. And you see, you know, like when I think about when I started with window treatments, there we were always selling a cost, a, a product, Right. I yeah. never, I was never selling the design without the product. That wasn't, it's not the business model for window treatments. You don't say, here's my design fee for all of the window treatments in your home. And then if you want to buy them for me, it's, a, yeah. it just doesn't work that way. Right. And so I always had cost of goods, installation costs attached to everything. And then of course I had Nagara who just said, these are the margins you will hit or don't come right. home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for for those like yourself, where you can essentially start off in a service only model, like you mentioned, not every project right. are you selling the furnishing. Sometimes it's it's the design for the construction, right. period. So that really is your time and intellectual product. And that is the Achilles heel of the industry is underestimating yeah. that value. Right. Right. And I feel like that goes back to like the confidence and the imposter syndrome where you're like, oh, it's just that, you know, am I that special? Am I that talented? Like, can't everyone do, and, you know, you think your superpower is like easy because it's easy for you, That's right. but it's not, everyone can't do it. Um, so I feel like it kind of loops back to that, you know, yeah. where it's like, you need to learn that what you're doing is valuable. And I was just having this conversation with a designer. Like, I feel like the more projects you do, the more you're like, oh, wow, this is a lot of work. Like, you know, maybe when you're going into, again, like coming out of design school, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Like I'll throw together some selections for a new, but whatever. Like it's not, it's not that big of a deal or it's not that much work. And then you're like, oh my God, it's so much work. Like the more projects you do each project, you're like, wow, there's even more stuff. And now I'm going back to the window treatment and redrawing this. And like, 
it's so much work. So I feel like that helps kind of, you know, helps you realize your value and like, oh, I need to charge what I'm worth and the amount of work that I'm doing on these projects. That's why Kim or Liddy, who's one of the co-authors in the Power Talk Friday experts and a Luann University instructor who teaches time tracking for profitability, is yeah. such an advocate for time tracking because it's it's human nature. We underestimate everything. We underestimate how long it takes for anything to do, or we overestimate it. It doesn't matter. It's like, it's just, we don't know. We don't (laughs) know. And the data is the only thing that you have to support it. Period. I just know with my own coaching with chairman of the board, the number of times in a coaching session, I'll ask somebody, you know, where do you think most of your business comes from? Like where, what are we going to work on? Like what's working and let's, let's do more of it. Right. Yeah. And I have learned never to take anybody at their word. I've learned that I can't unless somebody says, oh, wait, hey, Lou, let me pull out my spreadsheet. I, yeah. I'm going to have the conversation. We're going to talk about it. And then I'm going to say between now and next month, you need to justify that for me. I want you to make a list of all your clients for the last year, the last three years, depending on how many, you know, if it's a firm that does 10 jobs a year, I want them to go back three years. If it's a firm that does 10 jobs a month, I want them to go back one year, right? Yeah. But you'd be surprised how many times the next meeting starts with, oh, my God, like (laughs) I thought all of my jobs were coming from Instagram. It turns out that eight out of 10 are coming from referrals. And it's just like and what happens is, is our focus for the next year or at least next quarter is going to be very different if I know that 80 percent of your jobs are coming from referrals versus Instagram. Right. Right. Because now I want two strategies. That tells me two things. And by the way, if it's 25, 25, 25, 25, great. But if 80% are coming from any one place and you're not a 40 plus year business and that one place is referrals, I'm like, okay, that's amazing. And that's a great testament to you, but we're leaving something off the plate here. Like you're not developing an actual marketing strategy. Or if 80% are coming from Instagram, it's like, well, what's happening to all those clients? Why aren't they calling you back referring. and why aren't they referring right. you? So the, the, what I'm saying is the data reveals so much information that we can use in our business in all the ways, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that kind of reminds me something I was thinking about with investments, like when trying to decide what do you want to invest in? Like a lot of it is about what kind of business do you want to run? How many clients are you having a year? Um you know, I talked about this. I know you know that I hired Rachel and we talked about this, like, you know, she's like, don't invest in SEO. Like you, your clientele is not just doing a random Google search to find you. Like we're doing referrals, we're doing connections with builders and architects and that kind of thing. So like, that's where we're going to put the majority of our effort, not on like Pinterest or, you know, it's like, if you have a e-design business where you want to do nationwide and like more, you know, higher volume, lower ticket stuff like Pinterest might be great. And then you invest in a Pinterest course or a Pinterest, you know, person. Right. But it's like just kind of knowing what are your goals in business and, you know, what, what should your marketing strategy be to invest in for that? I love that. I love that. And it's, it's really something working with Rachel Bozak Johansson, isn't it? It's yeah, just a yeah. crazy experience, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. She knows her stuff. <laughs> Did you work with her before you met her at Luann Live or have you worked with her since Luann Live? Yeah. No, I worked with her um, almost a year ago. Okay. Okay. So you April, knew her going so. in. Yeah. Yeah. I did, but I found her from the podcast. Of you course. did. So, yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, that is, you know, I would say, you know, what have I got? A thousand interviews between the two podcasts, plus how many live events, how many thousands of people I've met, you know, top 20 really ridiculously uniquely talented people. I would put Rachel in that category. Yeah. It's somebody who has such a fine handle on what they do well and dialing it in. It's 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 absolutely amazing to watch her brain work in action. It's crazy. Yeah. And I think she's great at marketing and selling herself too. Like she, yes. you know, like, she, yeah, she's awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that was a takeaway from working in that, in that investment in Rachel was, you know, looking at where your existing clients were or where your best clients were probably the clients that you wanted more of that. Right. They weren't doing internet searches for you. They were coming from higher level um, relationships with builders and architects and so forth, it sounds right. like. Yep. 
Okay. So you need to develop a strategy for that. And it doesn't right. mean that, you know, these other strategies get by the wayside. It's just that it, it dictates where we spend the bulk of our time and money. Right. Right. And what the priority is, because again, right. it's like, I'm one person with not unlimited funds. So like, where am I going to put, you know, if I have a thousand dollars to spend this month, like, am I paying someone to do SEO or am I giving a thousand dollars of gifts to builders and architects to, and like setting up coffees, you know, like what makes the most sense? Right, 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 right. So in thinking about closing up the conversation, you, you know, you were there three, four, five years ago, listening to the podcast and thinking about building your business and taking all the information in. And of course, I'm sure, and I hope that you still are. And I hope that I still continue to put information in front of you that benefits oh, you. Yeah, but sure. like, what would you say to somebody who's, you know, first, second, third year in business and is considering, should I invest? Should I do what, you, you know, what, how did you first, because I think what it is now is, It's just like anything else. You've done it multiple times and you've gotten the payoff from it, whether it's a nugget of information or a drastic change. So you have flexed the muscle of doing it. But do you remember the first time deciding to make a big, scary investment purchase? And what what would you say to that person? I do. And so not to keep quoting other people, but Sandra said this like a month ago on one of her podcasts. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I was going to say to Luann. It was like, I had to write it down, <laughs> but it was, she said, if you believe you're in the right seat, if you believe you'll be in business in five years, you must invest in your business. And that was like, wow. that was what I was feeling. Like, this is my end game. I've had another career. I've had, you know, like there is no going back from like studio gas, me being in business for myself. There's no other option. Like, this is what I'm obsessed with. I love it. It's what I'm going to be doing, you know, until I retire, which I don't even want to retire because I freaking love my job. So <laughs> it's like, what is my other option here? Like, this is it. If I really believe like this is it and I'm going to make it like I have to make investments in myself, I you know, it. and I have to be able to up level my business and just keep like closing the learning gap so I can be better every day. I I have to say, it's going to be fun to see where you are in another five years. It really is because uh, so. <laughs> and, and, and I'll be here. <laughs> well, and that's a good question, Jamie. What is your aspiration? Like if I were to say to you, what does your firm look like in five years? Because there's, you know, you could be one of those, like, I want to be the next Martha Stewart, or you could be like, I want to still be solo with one or like, what is the, what is your vision for your firm? And how do you see that playing out? Yeah. So I was telling you off air, I did hire my first employee, which like, you know, speaking of scary investments, uh, you know, it's exciting, but also terrifying. Like I am responsible for someone else's livelihood. Um, (laughs) But again, I'm like, what else am I going to do? Like, this is the right step. It's the next step. Of course, it's uncomfortable because it's growth, but um, it's the right thing to do. Like if I plan on being in business for 30 more years, I need to hire this person. Um, So anyway, in five years, I I don't want to have a huge firm. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I feel like I would like to cap out at five or six people maybe where I have a little more capacity, a little more, you know, specialized job uh, functions and that kind of thing. But um, I don't want to, I feel like you get to this point where you're like, okay, now I have 20 people. Now I just have to keep getting more jobs to feed the beast where it's like, am I really making more than when I was on my own with like 10 jobs and just, you know, for what? So um, I want to have, you know, I feel like a lot of people do, but just bigger, fewer jobs and not a million employees, but, you know, a few. I like that. That's such a valid, valid aspiration for a business owner. It's funny because as we're recording yesterday, we put a uh, post out on Instagram that it was, you know, basically that do more things for less people, make more money by doing more things, better things, charging higher fees to less people. I mean, you know, I, I for for somebody who has twenty thousand followers, I know you know Instagram. Like my team is always like, "Oh, here's a good Instagram strategy." I'm like, "Why? Why?" <laughs> there's you know, there's twenty five people commenting. Like I don't you know, don't look at that twenty two thousand. That is not go and look at the email list that has legitimately eight thousand people on her saying, right. "Hi, Luann, I'm interested." Right? But yesterday like 780 comments or no 700 some likes and like 150 or 60 comments on yeah. this you know that yeah. what you just said like let that me resonates. do fewer <laughs> projects and make more money right yeah. well um, and i think sorry no, i think ahead. every designer feels this like even the small sometimes the small jobs are the more Ugh. energy sucking time consuming totally. 
it's like I'm doing the same thing. I have the same setup. You know, it's no matter how big the job is. So I should be at least getting the payoff in the that's end, right. not like dealing with this tiny job that's sucking all my energy and bandwidth for no money. It's the truth. It's the truth. And it comes from having the confidence in yourself to price yourself well and then to stand there by, you know, stand in your Sandra Funk space and say, yeah, that's right. how much it is. <laughs> right. And right. I feel like that's, not, it's not always easy. Like, no, I, you of know, course I say, it's not. Like, I don't get a ton of leads. I, I get a lot of no's and I, I know that I set myself up for that. I literally have my inquiry form to repel most people, you know, like it's got some pretty high minimums on there, but I'm like, that's what I, I don't want 30 leads a month. That's, that's not the right. business I'm running, that's but right. just like being, remembering that, reminding myself of that. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, haven't gotten many leads lately. Like that's okay. You don't want many leads. You want that's a right. couple of the right leads. So yeah, it, it is, hard, but... it is a head game though. It is a head yeah. game. The constant reminder to, like you just said, it's like, oh wait, I don't want 20 leads. Leads. I, 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 I need four and I've gotten two. I only have to get yeah. two more. <laughs> right, right. 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 No, that's awesome. I love that, Jamie. I think that's, uh, you know what? I, it's, I, I will be the first shocked person if you don't reach every goal and aspiration you put out for yourself. You're just too <laughs> Thank you. intentional. Yeah. You really, it's, uh, it's refreshing to see somebody who's willing to bet on themselves. That's basically how I'm reading it. You are betting on yourself and you are like, let's go all in all the money yep. on the line. I love I'm it. going to be here. Yep. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Oh my God. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you. This is awesome. Okay. So we've had a lot of discussions about imposter syndrome, right? And the thing is, it's just so dang normal. If you feel it, believe me, you are not alone. If you've ever felt it, if you have once to fail 50 times, you're not alone. It hits all of us at some time or another. The key, though, is to not sit in it. The key is to take actionable, tangible steps to mitigate the areas where, when you're feeling imposter syndrome, you are questioning that particular ability or that particular area of your worth, right? To Jamie's point, she said, the more she learns, the more she knows, the more confident she is. And through this, she has learned how less often that ugly imposter syndrome shows up in her life. That's a win-win. All right. So whatever you don't know, invest in something to learn it, whether you invest in a course, an audible book, or an event. A big factor in your ability to deliver an outstanding experience and result to your clients is your ability to educate them. And the more you are an expert at something, the more you are the leader, the expert in the room, the better position you are to do that. And the fantastic thing is, is once you invest in your business, there's a ripple effect. You invest that one time to educate yourself. This gives you confidence and that gives you re results in the client's trust, which will grow your business. But the thing is, you've gained the knowledge and expertise forever. <laughs> you pay once, you do it once, but you receive the benefits, the dividends forever. Jamie has spent thousands on investments in her business and self-development and she doesn't regret a single one. Jamie's also learned that in addition to the thing that she is paying to learn, she's learned that she always gets tremendous benefits by just being in the room. In the room of events like Luann Live, Power Talk Friday, the Exciting Windows Conference, the Sun Shading Solar Expo, High Point, okay? It doesn't matter. These are all the places where you can meet your design and window treatment peers. Jamie told us how by meeting other designers at a conference, she learned her pricing was way off. This one thing has had a lasting multiplying impact on her business and in turn her life. How huge is that? How long would Jamie have continued undercharging for her services if she hadn't put herself in the room? Okay, so what do you invest in? Well, this is different for each of us. Jamie actually chose to invest in design for construction at Lou University, even though she's no stranger to design for construction. She was already doing design for construction projects, you know, but for her, she wanted to get this gut check. She wanted to see how she was doing things compared to how Jenny was doing things. And it confirmed by taking class that she was doing a lot of the same things that Jenny was doing, but she also learned some great shortcuts and different techniques that Jenny uses that paid off. 
one takeaway from a Lou University course at 1900 bucks could turn into a six-figure job that you wouldn't have closed. This is the kind of thinking that Jamie does. It's this much money, but what could it become? Okay. Jamie offered some specific advice that she learned from a Sandra Funk episode. She said, Sandra said, if you believe you'll be in business in five years, you must invest in your business. Think about that. No, no, don't gloss over. Stop and really think about that. If you believe you will be in business five years from now, then you must invest in your business. Because think, if this is a hobby, whether you cognitively know it's a hobby or not, whether you walk around saying it is or it isn't, if you ask yourself that question, you will hesitate in answering it. You will hedge and you will say, well, you know, if this happens, I'll still be in business. And if that doesn't happen, I'll still be in business, right? Or you might hear when you ask yourself that question, heck yes, I'm going to be here in five years or 100% or I'm giving it all. I know I'm going to be here in five, five years, okay? And if that's what you hear in your head, then just maybe you do have the mindset to be a business owner. And if that is true, successful businesses invest in themselves and their future because they know there is a future. <laughs> you see the difference? Hear the difference? Better yet, sit quietly and ask yourself the question, even if you have to hit pause on the podcast right now. Ask yourself the question. You will feel the answer in your body. I promise you. Try it. And here's the thing. If the answer is no, it's okay. It's okay. But if the answer is yes, you have to take steps to build yourself as a leader, to build profitability into your business, to get the skills and the know-how and the knowledge that you need to be a successful business person. It doesn't just happen by magic, <laughs> right? If you wanted to learn to knit, you wouldn't sit down and go, okay, I bought all the things for knitting. I guess I'm a knitter. No, right? So sit and ask yourself the question. Hear what your inside voice says. Thank you, Jamie. I really appreciate this conversation so much about giving ourselves the permission and encouragement to invest in ourselves and to consider all of the reasons and the benefits on why we should. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Really, 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 really. And thank you for joining me today. And let me tell you something, little heads up, head over to my Luann Nigara and Friends Facebook group for some extra content with Jamie. When we stopped recording, she hit me with another little tidbit. And I was like, no, 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 Jamie, you got to record that for me. So over on the Facebook group, we do these extra segments called In the Booth. Um, and we post every week or two an In the Booth segment. And it's always a little off-air chat with the guest. And J Jamie's segment is going to be her talking for just a few moments on what she says to her design colleagues when they're surprised, which she says happens a lot, at her her willingness to invest so bravely in herself, okay? In that segment on Facebook, she shares more of her reasons behind it. All right, head over to catch it, okay? All righty, thank you, thank you so much for joining me today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.